Hi, this is John Smith again. Hi, this is John Smith again with Extra Hop Networks. And um, I want to do this will be our third uh, video of our Reveal X Humio integration with the uh, CrowdStrike Humio integration. Uh, and so today I want to cover a little bit more about the layer seven metrics. We've talked a lot about, and you can see here below. So this is our unmanaged devices bundle and um, Humio application. And below here, you see some five tuple data, right? With a link to download the PCAP file. Uh, this is similar to NetFlow data, except we do have PCAP uh, files available. We've got a little bit more information, you know, around L7 Proto, and a little bit more information um, in terms of round trip time, that kind of stuff that we can also uh, provide. But this is uh, very valuable, but it's not the full extent of what RevealX can deliver. So let's just take a look at what the layer seven data looks like. I come over here to search, and I'm just going to take this to a, a live. Uh, to a live time window. So let's go to let's like a five minute window or something like that uh, here. So and we're waiting for this to finish. And now we'll go to let's go to a five minute window. Sorry about the wait there. If you notice, it grabbed a whole lot of data in a very short period of time, which I like quite a bit. So here we've got a five minute window. And instead of what we typically see with EX flow data, right? And I can put this in here. Here's an example of EX flow data. And again, this is just similar to NetFlow. It's kind of a, just a five tuple array of, you know, receiver address, you know, receiver port, that kind of stuff. But when we look for non EX flow, when we get into the layer seven data, right here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just exclude. EX flow. And what we're going to be looking at here is some layer seven data. So here we're getting, you know, you see some DNS information. We get quite a bit more data. In fact, I'm going to go to the format tuple here and just give you an idea. That's just uh, in the last, that's just in the last five minutes, right? We're getting layer seven metrics around different um, layer seven transactions, right? This is application layer stuff that we're tracking. So if you want to get things like HTTP headers, host names, issuers, those are all areas where, you know, we can, we can provide some better visibility and some higher uh, context around detections. So let's say we want to get, uh, if you want to see different detections here, we might have some SIFs. So if I want to see SIFs traffic, right? I can actually just come in here, type SIFs underscore, and there you're seeing some SIFs traffic that's coming back and forth. And this can be handy uh, if you want to do something. Let's go out a little longer. Let's go out 24 hours. Let's say we want to see um, that, you know, when you're doing some threat hunting, what if you want to see this kind of this IPC dollar sign traffic, right? This can be a very valuable threat hunting technique, and I, I'm sure I have some. So if you're looking for things like um, LSA, RP, uh, um, SAMR, that kind of stuff, right there, you see WinReg. So you see a number of different in that resource uh, tuple, you see a number of different pretty valuable um, things that you want to look at. A lot of malicious activity starts here. Uh, likewise, another protocol, RPC, uh, let's go ahead, another of the lateral movement protocols that bad actors use, right? And keep in mind, these protocols don't log, right? And so one of the benefits of using RevealX is that, you know, while um, there's not a lot of logs around RPC, you can turn on Sysmon, but that can a lot of times run your system into the ground. And then the, the data you get isn't that valuable. So you have this big cost on your system to get some marginal data. Well, here, because we're working on the wire and we're a network-based solution, we're able to give you that you know, remote procedure call data. So if somebody tries to do a DC sync attack, if somebody tries to enumerate all your users, something like that, you have this capability to get that visibility. And if you look at those lateral movement protocols, one of the reasons they're so successful, things like Kerberos, remote procedure call, um, SIFs, they don't log very well. There's not a lot in Event Viewer, even with Sysmon enabled, and even if you want to run your box into the ground. So here we have this passive solution that's grabbing the data. The We're in a covert posture. The, the offender or the adversary doesn't know we're there. And we're able to deliver some nice visibility. Likewise, um, recently, um, 
We've also got some SSL stuff in here. So recently we had a GoDaddy breach of some of the cert keys, right, for, for WordPress. You can just type, so if you wanna know what your exposure is to that, right? Let's say you wanna look at hosting, you've got some WordPress sites. All I have to do is type GoDaddy and here you see a whole bunch of different uh, um, metrics here. And there you'll look, you'll see you got, uh, you know, 2,500, um, you know, uh, hits there. And you see all the different instances where you've connected to a GoDaddy issued certificate. And you can drill into this. And if you know more about, you know, the, the breach, maybe you know the specific issuer, that kind of stuff, or the specific um, subject alt name, that kind of stuff, you can get into that and dig a little deeper. So if there is an SSL, either you're looking for a nefarious issuer like Let's Encrypt, we don't have any of that. Um, this is a cyber range, but anything for Let's Encrypt, a GoDaddy does have some nefarious sites, or you know, if a particular cert provider gets compromised and you need to know if you have any of those certs in your environment, you can literally just query here and, and take a look at it. So again, also likewise Kerberos. Again, there's a reason that a lot of the Active Directory monitoring tools actually use Netmon or use some sort of sensor driven. I believe the preempt solution from CrowdStrike uses a sensor mode, right? It's because the data on the wire is a lot better than what you can log. And so here we're seeing Kerberos transactions. So again, this is an example of the rich layer seven data we can look at, uh, you know, subject alternative names of, of of SSL certificates. We can look at the, if a WPAD resolves to an external IP address, we can write that query and see that. So there are a lot of different threat hunting techniques that we can look at. So this is an example of layer seven data being sent to Humio. And what does that look like? Well, this is the trigger here. And this is where we send all of these different, this is around 5,000 tuples that get sent specifically to Humio where we're able to then have this layer seven data readily available. So I wanna walk through a quick example of how this can be leveraged in, in terms of the extended detection and response or XDR narrative, right? Um, right now, a lot of folks think XDR is vaporware or it's this sort of philosophy or this, this, uh, this, this concept, right? But let's bring this home. Here's an example of a Humio file. I've got a list of fake users that I downloaded and I added my name and one of my own jobs before, um, before college. So we've got this list of, of a fictitious list of former employees. So we have employees that have either been terminated or laid off or they've quit and went on to find other jobs. And they stopped driving a forklift and went to college, whatever, right? So I've got this list of former employees here. So what I wanna do is I've got this query that I'm gonna match up the Kerberos client principal name. And so if you look along the top here, right, uh, you see the bang dollar sign. So I'm eliminating um, machine authentication. I'm looking for an AS rec, which is a Kerberos. And I'm looking for that KRB TGT. This term probably causes some PTSD for some SOC analysts. Uh, that is one of the areas we look for. Uh, and it's a very critical subject, uh, subject uh, name that we look for a sub, uh, subject principal name, server principal name, sorry. So I'm going to match up the client principal name with the usernames of my terminated users. And the idea behind this is that if a user that no longer works for the company, and we've all seen this, there's actually been breaches as a result of this, where a user who has left the company, well, their, their information hasn't been disabled. So now we've got this, you know, this risk going on in our environment. So we need to be able to see that, right? Other scenarios. If you want to monitor critical uh, personnel for spear phishing activity, that kind of stuff, this really takes the extended detection and response from a concept to an actual tactile thing that we're able to do. And so that's very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as John Smith, uh, the former forklift driver. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and this is our Cali box from our cyber range. And I'm going to go ahead and log in to this uh, box. But before I do that, let's walk through this. So I'm gonna match these up, but I've also got an alert. So I've configured a Humio alert and the action is to send an email to me. So if I see a former employee logging in, then I want to be able to flag that and I wanna get an alert. So here we've got an area where an inbox where I should 
the alert should arrive. So let's go ahead and log in. Let's make sure this is live. Uh, let's go back here. Yeah, all right. So I'm gonna log in, all right? And while we're watching this, there you see almost immediately, John Smith, a uh, forklift driver, has logged in from this client IP address. And there you see almost immediately, we get a Humeo alert in less than 30 seconds, right? We actually get an alert that, hey, a former employee has just logged in. Uh, John Smith's a forklift driver. I don't know how much logging in that user account does. And keep in mind, no matter how benign an Active Directory account is, there's always some sort of escalated um, ticket that's on a server, either through some service account. Basically, every single Active Directory account represents a key to the crown, key to the castle. And so these can be misused and they can be abused regardless of the level of access or regardless of how much least privilege you use. Keep in mind when someone's on a Windows system, we have this insecure Kerberos authentication scheme that allows escalation of privileges almost on every single system. It's almost impossible to stop. So again, this is an example very quickly. I've referenced a file of former employees uh, likewise, if I have geospatial data in there, right, if John Smith lives in St. Petersburg and uh, Florida and he logs in from Belarus, right, that's something we can also flag. So again, back into the vein of extended detection and response. We have a repository in Humio, very fast, very scalable, uh, can store multiple terabytes of data we're able to store that data and then make these quick decisions by leveraging the files feature. And now I can do this match and there's any number of things that I can track with this. And more importantly, I have some better context, right? Why would a forklift driver be logging in? You know, that type of information in addition to the fact that this is a former employee. So these are all things that add context to the SOC analyst that has to peel the onion back. The goal here is to deliver a high context finding so that then that thread can be tugged and we can start the process of adjudicating an incident much faster than we're doing it today. So again, this is an example of the Humio uh, file feature, uh, the lookup feature that we have with the Humio search engine, and also the really high level of context that can be delivered when you pair it with the RevealX layer seven transactions that are very rich in data. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.